Democrats had a busy year declaring war on appliances in the name of green energy. But one liberal leader got a pass on her gas. <laughs> Kamala is getting burned online, <laughs> get it, for posting this photo of her and the second hubby, Doug Emhoff, cooking up some Christmas beef Wellington, sounds kinky, on a gas stove, <laughs> which the regulating obsessed Biden administration considered banning over health concerns. And it's not just gas stoves. Biden's anti-consumer crusade is targeting four more types of appliances, including but not limited to dishwashers, air conditioners, washing machines, and furnaces. Had enough nanny state? I've been telling you. Well, how about Mayor Pete going after your wheels? The share of EVs has been dramatically increasing every single year, and that's continuing. Now, our goal is by the end of this decade uh, to be about half and half. I don't know a lot of people who think that Americans in 2050 are still going to be driving uh, that old technology, that, that combustion technology that we inherited Americans in like the 20th it. century. Americans like it. The big like question it. is, uh, well, no, you're, you're not going to meet a lot of people who ever go back after they've gone electric, and okay. uh, I think that really tells you something. It tells me that you're an elitist, Secretary <laughs> Pete. Uh, so, Joey, let's talk about this a little bit, because uh, there are people in this country who are still quite fond of the combustion engine. NASCAR got fuel injection in, like, the last five years. And what I mean by that, the reason why NASCAR, with all technology in the world, waited that long for fuel injection is because people at home had spent some time in their life tinkering with a carburetor, and they wanted that connection with those people. People care about things they can put their hands on and fix. You can't do that with an electronic vehicle. You can't do that with a gas-powered vehicle that has too many computers running everything else about it. I know that because I've got one that's been in the shop too many times because it has more computers than it does cylinders. So th the idea that this technology is to the place where people want to abandon something that makes sense to them for something that spontaneously combusts or something that they can't run on E for five miles to get to the gas station. They're going to have to wait two hours. To, it, it does. EVs don't match up with how Americans live their lives. If they ever get there, it's a different conversation. But they're not there. They're not going to be there at 2050. And the idea that we're going to take away something like a stove, I mean, fire departments can't make you put out a fire during a burn ban if you need it to heat, for heat. So they're going to make you get rid of your stove that you need to cook with until the power goes out? Yeah, exactly. You, you can't cook on an electric stove if there's a power outage. And with all this climate change, I mean, we've seen in Texas and California, they've got brownouts and blackouts. And if there's a weather catastrophe, you just want people to die? Kyrus, that sounds cruel. No, it sounds like, well, they're full of it, as politely yeah. as I can say during the five p.m. hour. <laughs> this is just more of the hustle. Pete's like, we're going to be by 2050. You have no idea. You can't even figure out how to get the trains to get from point A to point B, oh, PD. And now you're going to tell us. Or the planes. That, or the planes, you know, but now in 250. And again, it's the unaffected. They say these things. Pete was smart enough to do it from a cubicle. Because if you went to his house, there'd be a gas stove in it. <laughs> you know, so they, they literally, and the thing with the cars, listen, the more this stuff happens, they want to have the effect where people are completely dependent on the government. Mm -hmm. And I, libertarians and uh, all was like, no, mm -hmm. I, I'm going to go the other way. I'm currently shopping for like an, uh, a 57 Chevy. I'm looking for something that if the worst case scenario is, I can take that moonshine I made from the summer, there pour it in my tank <laughs> and get away. But without my worrying about my car freezing up or being tracked or have a little voice tell me, oh, you said you're going to CVS. Why are you making a ride at the oh gas station? But, but that's what you're waiting for. Yep. That's what you're coming. Or you've been allotted. 15 miles today left on your 100 It's for all the week. about control. It's all about control. They're not going to do it. When the president turns in his Corvette and trades it in for an EV, then I'll, I'll be like, hmm, let's pay attention. But again, no, the EVs, just the fact where they're getting from, you're making us dependent on China, which should be the last thing we would want to do. Because uh, he who owns the rights to those battery fields owns the, the entire world. And that's it's a money-making hustle. And to your point, why are people sticking with combustibles? Because they know that they at least can hold on to their freedoms with it, just like yeah, their guns and, also, and their trucks. Word of mouth is what gets people to buy new things right. and, yeah. and to, do, to do a total technology shift. But the problem is with the EVs, there are so many more just sitting idle. Right. They're, they're just sitting on showroom it's not, floors. not just that. You just said word of mouth. Most of the people who get the EVs come up to you and they talk down to you like, oh, I'm gone, electric. Right. It's you know, it's like this. It's, it's just like this. They're, we call it flossing. You know, and then they're the first ones, they're, they're flossing about their EV, and then they call you up 
hey, it's really cold. I think I can catch a ride. They feel better about <laughs> because my EV won't start. It the is plug virtue froze. signaling, but, but if they yes. were so great, people would be snapping them up with all this, the credit that the whole, federal government is offering. The whole forced EV transfer under the guise of climate change is a total scam. Electric vehicles are not climate neutral. They are not carbon neutral. They take mining in places where you don't want to look because it is so severe for the people yep. getting that cobalt and everything out Modern of the ground slavery. with their slave labor. And then they, what do they do? They put it on ships that use diesel fuel to get it here. And when you know they go away or sit in lots like they are because it's costing Ford $36,000 per vehicle that they're making in a loss with the government subsidy. And the government's just going to tax us more to subsidize this transfer because it's about control. And when it comes to the consequences of this, how do you think that food gets out of the ground with diesel? It's not getting out of the ground with electric vehicles. And you have these proposals to go after things like gas stoves. Well, that seems silly. In New York, they passed a ban for gas stove hookups for most residential buildings starting in 2026. But there are exceptions to hospitals, industrial buildings. Well, why are there exceptions? Because fossil fuels work. We have our modern lifestyle as a result of fossil fuels, and to take it away in a force aspect like this is going to cause a lot of human suffering that they're not telling you about. And it, it's not just gas stoves, dishwashers, washing machines, furnaces, air conditioners. I do not want to be a stinky European, Jessica. <laughs> you won't have to be. <laughs> Thank you. Um, because all of these things are just proposals. And uh, odds are, I guess, implemented. Yeah, the New York one, so that's new construction. It's not going into people's homes and telling you that you have to undo it. There are a lot of carve outs, but no one has mentioned why there's any conversation about getting rid of gas stoves. And it's because of childhood asthma. So gas stoves are responsible for 12% of the childhood asthma cases That's in the U.S. True. Yes, it is true. 21% of the cases in Illinois, 20% of the cases in California. It's a health and safety risk more than it's just about uh, liberals wanting to exert maximum control over the populace that we think that we're smarter than. And it's not going to be implemented on a federal level. So, yes, in New York City, if you have a problem with it, I'm sure restaurants are going to carve outs, too, because you're going to go you go to a steakhouse and they're not going to have a gas stove. That's not going to happen for people. But you you can't forget what ha the difference between what is actually happening and what could happen. Well, what is actually, but there have been what, regulations in air conditioning no, units. And, uh, absolutely. They're more expensive someone to put it, in. And, and they're that, not necessarily, uh, they're certainly not more cost efficient. They're also not more energy efficient. And in California, you're going to be paying upwards of 50% more a year for your electricity when it becomes fully renewable. Well, when it becomes. NTR, not that rad. <laughs> Not that red. Right. No one is coming into your house and seeing that oh, your temperature gauge right, is at 68 and saying, That's no, 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 you're right getting a certificate of occupancy in California. They are coming into your house. They are nitpicking everything and they are making damn sure that you are living up to every overregulated letter. And then they won't give you the occupancy and then you're squatting. Thank God libertarians believe in squatters' rights. And that's why I live in Louisiana. <laughs> hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.